All right, we are six minutes after the hour, so why don't we go ahead and get started? I think folks are going to keep trickling on in. Um, it is good to see everyone bright and early this morning, and I want to extend an official welcome to the Nonprofit Capacity Building Readiness Summit. Um, I'm going to be the facilitator for today. My name is Maggie Acosta, and I'm with the UIC Collaboratory for Health Justice. We've been working with the mayor's office and with many of the amazing departments here today um, to put together this event for you. So um, I want to start with some housekeeping just so folks can know um, how we plan to be engaged virtually in this space together. So um, the first thing is I want to let folks know that there are captions and interpretation available. So if you look at your menu bar on your screen, you should see an option for captions if you'd like to see the transcript. There is also American Sign Language. It should be showing up on many of your screens already. If you'd like to turn it on because you don't see it already, please find the interpretation button. Um, and you can also find Spanish language using that same interpretation button. Um, if you have any tech issues at all during this main event, please use the email address on the screen. It's sphcollaboratory at uic.edu, and we'll do our best to resolve the tech issues as soon as we can. We do have the chat active. Thank you all for introducing yourselves in the chat, letting us know where you're calling in from. Please also use the chat to answer or to enter any questions. We are going to be compiling them and there will be time for Q&A, so we will try to answer as many questions as we can. Those that we can't get to, we will try and compile them and get answers to you and post them at a later date. So please know that your questions matter to us and that they are important and we will get you answers to as many as we can. And folks saw this as they signed in, but just a reminder that this event is being recorded. So once we get to breakout rooms, if you're not able to join all the sessions that you want to, please know all of the sessions will be recorded and you can find them at a later time. So with that, let's jump on into the sessions for today. So this is the agenda for our next few hours together. Just so folks know, we do have um, a packed morning for all of us. We are going to kick off this morning and probably spending the first 30 minutes talking big picture. We're going to talk the vision and some of the strategies here in the city to invest in communities, which is why uh, or which is what I know brings us all together today. So we're going to talk big picture um, about the work that is some of the work that is going to be happening here in Chicago, especially focusing on the recovery after the COVID-19 pandemic. So after the first 30 minutes, we're going to do a quick session looking at where you can find some of the recovery plan RFPs or requests for proposals. And then we're going to do back to back breakout rooms. So we're going to start getting into some of that meat, some of that nuts and bolts of what brought you all here today. So the first breakout room, we're going to talk about the current opportunities that are available so you all can get to see them and ask questions. And then the second breakout room, we're going to talk about some tips that can help you as you apply or manage a grant. Then we do want to spend some time at the end letting you all know what other resources and trainings are available. So this Ready Summit, this Readiness Summit is just one of many trainings that are going to be available. So we're going to ask you to mark your calendars for some upcoming sessions so you can start getting those um, on your calendar and join us at other ones. And then finally, we're going to wrap up with a post-session survey as we log off. We do ask folks to stay on and complete that post-session survey. It's going to inform us on what other kinds of trainings you might want to see now that you know what all is going to be a part of this program. So please let us know what other trainings you want to see um, and complete that survey by staying on with us for the last few minutes. So the first person we're going to hear from today is Mayor Lightfoot. She has recorded a clip for all of us, and she wants to open us up talking about the importance of investing in communities. So I'm going to go ahead and play this clip. Hello, everyone. I'm Mayor Lori Lightfoot, and I'm excited to welcome you to the City of Chicago's Nonprofit 
Readiness Summit. Today, you will hear from city leaders and our partners on upcoming Chicago Recovery Plan programs about the variety of ways the city is supporting our nonprofit organizations and how you can maximize this once in a generation opportunity to invest in our communities. Over the last few years, many of you were asked to do more with less and many of you have yet to fully recover from the social, emotional, and economic impact of the pandemic. In order to ensure our city's recovery, we must therefore invest in you so that you can have access to the necessary resources to make a positive impact on the people that you serve every single day. That is precisely why last year, we launched a readiness summit in partnership with the county and state to make sure that you were all aware of and well positioned to apply for recovery opportunities. Today's readiness summit is part of our ongoing commitment to strengthen nonprofits and increasing your capacity to serve our residents, especially those operating on the south and west sides and in the communities hardest hit by COVID-19. Throughout my tenure as mayor, equity has been my unwavering North Star. Last year, I introduced the citywide equitable social services contracting policy, one of the first such policies nationwide. And as a result, the city has made strides in providing upfront funding to delegates and streamlining contracting processes. There is still work to do, and this readiness summit is part of our ongoing commitment to ensuring equitable contracting across all of our city departments. And by supporting your critical work together, we will make Chicago more equitable and inclusive for years to come. So today, I'm excited for you to learn about the various ways the city is making strides to remove barriers for historically underrepresented organizations, that are doing impactful work across health and human services, economic development, mental health, and so much more. So thank you all for attending today's summit, and thank you for your shared commitment to our beloved city of Chicago and its residents who are most in need. Hello, everyone. So, um opening us up on that tone i think that is the perfect way to start this morning reminding us why we're all here to talk about investing in chicago's communities and now we want to get deeper into some of what that looks like and what that means so our next speaker jay stapleton is going to talk to us about equity in delegate agency contracting so i'm going to turn it over to you jay Thank you, Maggie. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at the Readiness Summit this morning. Uh, it's great to see such a high turnout. Uh, as Maggie said, I'm here to share a little bit more about our equity work for delegate agency contracting. As the mayor mentioned in her opening remarks, uh, we started this work uh, a year ago. And so we wanna make sure that all of you um, are aware of the work and uh, provide an update. Maggie, I'm not seeing the slide deck anymore. Sorry, Jay, uh, quick technical difficulty. Could you, could you give me back host powers, please? So while we're getting that started, I can just share a, a little bit about our contents to uh, my contents today. I'll keep my remarks brief and happy to answer any questions. Uh, but as I said, we'll share a little bit about the background of the delegate equity work, uh, which includes our vision and mission statement, a little bit about the qualitative and quantitative data that we looked at to inform our strategies. And then I'll close by sharing uh, what our delegate equity strategies are and the actions that we've taken to date to move those forward. Next slide, please. So our vision for our delegate equity work is that the city of Chicago provides the best quality health and human services through vendors big and small who represent the city's diversity and help grow their local communities. Uh, we know that Chicago is a big diverse city that has so much to offer and so really want to think about how the city can best partner 
uh, with that diverse array of stakeholders and grow uh, organizations that are indigenous to our 77 communities. So our mission uh, to achieve that vision is to commit to lifting barriers to create a more loving, level playing field for equitable participation and inclusion in the delegate agency contracting process. And I, I should probably also add when I, I'm saying delegate agency, most, most I'm, on a that, uh, I'm on a call. I'm on a call. Our city lingo. OJ, you're on mute now. Oh, sorry. All right. Uh, so I was just saying, and, and for anyone who may not know, when we say delegate agency, uh, that is city terminology, meaning a grantee is someone who is receiving a grant to provide services on behalf of the city. So our mission includes reaching historically underrepresented organizations, uh, strengthening organizations indigenous to and led by individuals representing communities they serve, uh, increasing resources in high need communities, ensuring cultural competence, and holding ourselves accountable for those results. Uh, next slide, please. So we started this work by grounding ourselves in data. We knew both quantitative and qualitative data, and I'll talk a little bit our, about our qualitative data in a second. But uh, we knew that that's where we needed to start. So we started in 2020 with an initial analysis of uh, existing contracts at that time with the city. So this is one snapshot in time. We were not able to go back and look at uh, prior years, unfortunately. So I do wanna caveat that this was one uh, snapshot in time where we looked at 400 delegate agencies across seven departments uh, with 1,200 contracts totaling over $280 million. We also, uh, in that year and the following year, looked at data in our uh, backend system and self-reported data to try to understand where in the city our dollars uh, were, were being spent and where delegate agencies uh, who were partnering with us to spend those dollars were located. Uh, so I'll share a little bit more about our findings in the next slide, but a big caveat is that we realized that our data was very limited and could not be conclusive by itself. Uh, so you'll see later on that one of the pillars of this work is improving our data so that we can have uh, better insight into our equity metrics. And so this addressing this data gap became a priority for us. Next slide, please. So as I said, while the data was limited, the analysis uh, indicated uh, that we did have opportunity for more equitable grant making. So you'll see uh, a map on the right uh, that was used uh, to map uh, the addresses of our delegates from the, our iSupplier system. Uh, so as I said, our, our data is not great. Uh, we were not able always to distinguish between an organization's billing address and where actual services were happening. Uh, so we are working on better uh, in, improving our data systems to better capture that. But with the limited data that we have, we did see that the three community areas, which include downtown in the loop, uh, represented 33% of all delegate contracts. Uh, the green on the map is the remaining 33, uh, of the 66, the remaining 33%, then middle is yellow and red is uh, the, the bottom. So we did see that uh, additionally, there were 10 delegate agencies that accounted for 28% of our, our total funding. And as I said, a disproportionate share of those were headquartered uh, in the central business district or CBD and the loop. And that we weren't seeing a uh, uh, funding based on our limited data that was in periphery communities as much as we would like, and that 13 communities had no uh, funded agencies based on the data that we had. Uh, as a little bit of additional context, we did find that the majority of contracts with delegates are issued by our Department for Family and Support Services, or DFSS, or our Department of Public Health, or CDPH. And the majority of delegate agency contracts uh, are between uh, $100,000 and $500,000 or less than $100,000 based on the, the 2020 data that we analyzed. Next slide, please. So knowing that our quantitative data was limited and that even if I think it had been more robust, we did not wanna rely solely on quantitative data, 
we paired this with qualitative data and stakeholder engagement. We partnered uh, with Bloomberg Associates to interview over 150 people from inside the city across various city departments. Uh, we interviewed current delegate agencies, former delegate agencies, organizations that had applied for funding and not received it, organizations that had never applied for city funding, uh, philanthropic partners, as well as community leaders. So we really cast a wide net and worked with these stakeholders to understand what are the main barriers for contracting with the city and what changes are needed to make the process more equitable. Key insights from these interviews uh, which perhaps uh, may not be, be surprising to some folks aren't in the room or that the, the city's reimbursement model at many times represents a barrier to smaller organizations. We also heard that subcontracting models can create further inequities or do not necessarily alleviate administrative burdens. Um, additionally, delays in contract execution and payments uh, when those happen, that those can impose hardships for delegates and that onerous paperwork processes uh, do not always align with funding amounts and that there may be an opportunity to streamline our paperwork processes. And then finally, that there are some information gaps. Community-based organizations uh, many times were not aware of when contracting opportunities were available. Um, we also uh, heard that there were some, some good things that were already happening uh, in the city. We're not starting from scratch. So if we go to the next slide, we can see that there is a foundation of equity language and RFPs. And so it really, um, you know, the city is, is very diverse. We have many departments with many different divisions that are doing that grant making. And so uh, we were able to, to, to hear from folks and to see in our research that there are equity uh, practices already in place and that there is an opportunity to expand and standardize those across the city to ensure that across the board, we are um, using best practices for equitable grant making and that we're communicating that to our outside partners. So I won't read through this whole list, but you can see on, on the right, we have, we have a list of all of the different RFPs that we looked at. And, and we could see that there were some places where there really were uh, best practices for partnering with communities, thinking about RFP scope and language, um, how we're sharing information, how we're calling out small organizations, et cetera. Uh, so we did uh, capture these best practices to help inform uh, some of the work that we did next. So as the mayor mentioned, uh, next slide please. Last year, uh, she released the framework for equitable social services contracting. So what this framework did is put in policy uh, our equity goals and the ways in which uh, the tactics that we were going to use uh, at a high level um, to, to bring those goals to fruition. So again, I won't read this whole slide, but this uh, entire policy is available online. And so you can look at that um, afterwards if you would like. Uh, next slide, please. So where we're at now is that we do have seven goals that we are uh, implementing across all city departments. Each goal has a department lead that is convening working groups, driving implementation and uh, reporting uh, on their progress. So those goals include, as I said, uh, standardizing and refining RFPs and the contracting process to ensure that we're uh, feature, uh, focusing on cultural competency, making that process uh, more equitable, improving access to information, both for city staff. So as again, I said, sharing those best practices and improving access to information uh, for our delegate partners through an easy one-stop shop. Uh, online platform, so we haven't launched that yet, but we are working on that. Uh, simplifying paperwork re requirements, looking across all agencies to say, where do we have redundancies and paperwork requirements, and how can we cut those down to be a better business partner to our delegates? Improving delegate agency cash, cash flow. Last year, the mayor did launch as well an advanced mobilization policy uh, where delegates can apply to get 25% of their contract uh, upfront instead of using that reimbursement model. So we're working on expanding that policy as well as our prompt payment policy. 
um, supporting capacity of, of, of delegates, uh, both existing delegates and non-delegates, small nonprofit partners. A part of our goal five is this readiness on this. It's the, it's the work here to uh, provide technical assistance, both one-on-one -on -one and in group form. And I'll, my colleague, Isabel, will talk about that in the next slide. Uh, we're also thinking about how to better partner with philanthropy to leverage funds for capacity development and leverage the knowledge of community leaders. Um, our goal six is looking at how we can align with efforts to identify new uses for underutilized city spaces and expand access to services by partnering with dele delegates to utilize city spaces. And then finally, goal seven, which really stretches across all of these pillars, is creating accountability through clear metrics. Uh, so as I mentioned, you know, one of our early findings is that we needed better data to inform our equity strategies and hold ourselves accountable. And so we've already started some of that work uh, through iSupplier uh, um, updates, and we're continuing to think about across all uh, six of these goals, what our key metrics are um, so that we can hold ourselves accountable to the work going forward. So thank you for your time today. I'm happy to answer more questions. And with that, I will pass it over to my colleague, Isabel, who is going to do a little bit more of a deep dive into some of the capacity development work that we're uh, currently uh, undergoing. Hi, good morning, and uh, thank you, Jay. Buenos dias. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the nonprofit capacity building program as a whole, and I will just give a brief overview since some of our capacity builders will talk more in detail about the services that they themselves are providing. So my name is Isabel Velez Diaz. I am the Director of Economic Recovery for the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. For economic recovery portfolio, we are working on three specific things, assistance to, not, to support small businesses, food equity and nonprofit capacity building, which uh, this program is part of. Um, next slide, please. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, like businesses did, nonprofit organizations experienced a lot of financial hardship, as you know, and a lot of nonprofits have experienced a significant increase in demand while uh, not enough while not receiving enough financial support and having the operational capacity to meet that demand. So for this program, we want to ensure that the nonprofit ecosystem has a strong recovery. And that's how we created the nonprofit capacity building program that will provide technical assistance and capacity building services to nonprofits. Uh, this will be done by uh, curated events and seminars and one-on-one -on -one assistance. So topics will, that this program will touch will be how to apply for city government funding, how to navigate our I supplier, which we'll talk about more later in detail, but that's our city's system for applying to work with the city. Upcoming RFP opportunities, uh, compliance and reporting expectations. This is particularly important for federally funded programs. Um, we will do small group workshops so that you can work with other peers and the workshops will be facilitated by capacity builders. Uh, next slide, please. So this program has basically four main uh, things that we're working on. The readiness, readiness Summit, this is readiness one of four that we will be doing this year. So you are already in the first part of this program. The other services that we'll be provider, providing will be monthly webinars, weekly small group workshops, and most importantly, one-on-one -on -one assistance. So you will work with an individual coach that can help you either apply or administer your city grant. Next, next slide, please. So as I mentioned, this writing summits, which is the one you are all today, will be virtual half-day sessions with plenary, plenary uh, sessions and work, work groups. I won't go through all of this slide because the um, organizations providing this service will talk more about it. Same with the next one. Uh, next slide, please application assistance. So um, Women Business Development Center and Greater Upper Bridge Development Corporation will be providing these services. Uh, they're, they're providing live webinars, group sessions, and that one-on-one -on -one assistance I mentioned. The webinars will be once a month. The small group workshops will be once a week. And the individual coaching is ongoing, so you can sign up through the same 
uh, uh, place you sign up for this summit for that individual coaching and any of the other services. Next slide, please. So this is what's upcoming in the next three months. On April 23rd, there'll be a corporate governance for nonprofit webinar on the um, and the strategy to from strategy to budget, and then in May, uh, how to register your nonprofit on SAM.gov. SAM.gov is something that you need to be registered on for any federal grants. Apart from that, uh, here are the dates listed on this slide for the weekly small group workshops provided by um, the BDC and the one-on-one -on -one assistants have different days and you can sign up uh, via the portal, as I said, here's the link to access it. And those will be provided by both WBDC and GAGDC. Uh, both of these organizations will have a whole section at the end of this day today of the uh, to answer all your questions and also provide more details about the services that they will be providing. Next slide, please. And uh, this is for the Q&A. Also, if you have any information about this program, you can see my email here. You can uh, email me or my team. All right. Thank you so much, Isabel. I see that there are questions in the chat as well. So if folks want a copy of the slide and the recordings, it will be posted available online later. So thank you for asking. We will make sure that you have access to them later. So to keep us moving, I think now Isabel is going to continue to talk with us about where we can find some of these RFPs or requests for proposals. And then in just five minutes, we will be jumping into breakout rooms. So we'll share the rooms and then you all will be choosing which one you want to attend. So I'll pass it back over to you, Isabel. Great, so finding a Chicago recovery plan RFP. Uh, the place is iSupplier. As I mentioned earlier, if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, so what is the Chicago recovery plan? The Chicago recovery plan is the city's plan to amplify a once in a generation federal funding to create an equity best investment strategy to catalyze sustainable economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the funds are coming from uh, the Chicago Recovery Plan, which includes funding from the American Rescue Plan or ARP, you'll hear the word ARP a lot, and over 600 million in local bond funds. Uh, this is allocated all other available resources in the city to maximize the opportunity over the next three to five year uh, funding period. And you can look, uh, for any open RFPs in chicago.gov backslash recovery plan. So if you go to that website, you'll see a list of everything that's open from all the departments. Um, next slide, please. So this is where what a supplier looks like. This is our portal. You will go into the link above on the slide. And again, as mentioned, you will get these slides. Um, you have to click on the bottom on the top under current bids and solicitation opportunities. Uh, next slide, please. And then you can see um, the details and how many there are. So on the top right, you'll see there's only a few, but if you search, you can go to see more of them. And one um, advice for delegate agencies, which is what you will likely be uh, applying for or the applications you will be looking for, if you sort by event, those will come up first. So instead of saying uh, construction, it'll say delegate agency, and that way you can find the one you're looking for probably uh, faster. Uh, next slide, please. So if you wish to look at the RFP document uh, without starting an application, you can click on the PDF file on the top right, and this will open a uh, PDF file with the RFP uh, and the application questions. Um, I highly recommend just based on experience so far to answer the questions separately on a Word document and then just copy paste them into um, the application itself so that it's easier to type and have your complete responses. Next question, next slide. All right, 